for Flash to be over so he can drag the season out behind a shed and shoot it in the head. That is the same verbatim yep. words you said on Facebook. Yep. I, was, I said I had a yeah. bit, and this is the bit. Yeah, uh, after, let's, after let's you... Fucking, let's fucking old yower this season and get it over with. Uh, yeah, I keep on thinking of uh, Hateful Eight um, when... Uh... Don't spoil the movie. I haven't seen it yet. What? Well, it's not a spoiler, but all you need to know is Michael Madsen shoots a guy. Okay, that <laughs> he, he does that in everything he's in. Right. But there's a point where a guy is going out back, and he, like, hides in a cupboard outside. And Michael Madsen just follows the trail of blood. Yeah. <laughs> eh. um, yeah, and he just shoots him point blank. So uh, uh, It's pretty I, great. I don't want to get into video game hour, but... Connor... You're about to. <laughs> what? Uh, have you encountered him yet in uh, Walking Dead? Yes. Yes. Did you come? What? What? I know it. I'll wait until we do a Walking Dead episode. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I met the returning character, and I was, I was very pleased. Anyway, uh, hey, Kryptonian criminals, uh, Connor McGraw here in Subsets Phantom Zone with Arlen Harrow. Hey, and Alan Muir. F to the U to the C to the K. Fuck X Men Apocalypse, yo. That was a new one. All right. All right, we do our usual CW catch up, and pretty much winding down with all three shows. Next week's finales for everything, it seems. Yeah, right. Then the yeah, yeah, they're all they're they're all wrapping up. Um, and guess which one we're most excited for? It doesn't rhyme with cash. Um, yeah, I want oh, man, this not, flash not excited to just for grifter? mercifully end. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll we'll get more to it into the flash episode but I, I just just let it be over with uh, I, I've never done a 180 well no I've done two 180s actually yeah uh, it's, a weird, it's a weird year for these shows because as I didn't see Arrow season 4 but as bad as I hear season 4 is is as bad as Flash season 3 is but yeah. again we'll get to that in the Flash talk we're going to talk about Arrow first because Arrow was the best of the week we all made that consensus yep can we didn't I even agree? need to do any math. No. Good shit. Usually we do. Um, Speaking of yeah. Arrow Season 4, they did some things in this episode that they they did along the lines, along the season of Arrow Season 4. Yeah. And, and they kind of, like, followed things some things up. Four. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, it feels like... like... when um, Oliver and Malcolm... Are are basically barking at each other. Yeah, <laughs> which oh, is I'm a gonna, really good scene. I'm gonna bring up my negative right now. Um, okay. The flashbacks felt like they were finally gonna come full circle. And then yeah. Kovar. And then and then it this seems like padding. It does. It kind of whole. I feel like it was wholly unnecessary. Yeah, I, I think I think the reasoning for it is just so we can have. Uh, Yao Fei back for an episode. He was so good. Uh, and to and to slide Katie Cassidy into as many parts as possible. Yeah, it it, it feels like what, well, like it really is like them trying to finish this up. Like, and it, and if they announced suddenly that season six wasn't happening, it does feel like oh, this is how the show would end, and we don't need to do anything after this. And you know, you could even consider it being the end and just pretend everything after doesn't happen. Because yeah. um, they're really setting it up to be that way. I wouldn't be surprised if next week we see uh, Malcolm's son, Tommy, back for, like, an episode or something. Um, because they're really, like, throwing everything at us as far as things from well, the past that they're bringing that back. That and, like, having this all come to a head on Lee and Yu is pretty big. Yeah. And like dragging it, like dragging up all these names from like earlier in the sh- in the series, fucking Deathstroke, Malcolm, Talia, Adam Hunt, uh, Adam, yeah, like all these people, like the mm-hmm. no- the Notebook, not the film, yeah, uh, yeah, like I like I said, like I've been doing, I've been watching, I've been catching up, like at, episode here, episode there of season of this season on iTunes. Hmm. Yeah, it's um the scene where uh, Russian got Russian 
God number one has Oliver's or Robert Queen's book of Crooked Men. Yeah. I must admit. Wait, was this ep- this episode? No, no, it was an episode no. with. Um, it was one of the earlier. It's one of the early Rafa episodes. Okay. Oh, okay. Something from season like one or something. No, no, no. I see early, what you mean. Early in this season. Oh, okay. I God, think that it feels like an eternity ago. Like one of the first yeah. four or five episodes in. Yeah. Of this season. That, that is that's it. That is impossible for me to, to recollect because, like I said, this is this. I don't like the CW breaks they do because sometimes, like a mid a mid season break, cool, fine. Then like they come back from mid season, they have an episode, and they're like, "Hey, see you in three weeks." I'm like, "Wait a minute, hold on, you can't take a mid season break and then take another three week break." Remember when the Flash season two like did that like five times last year? Oh my god, Flash season! Two, I just think remember watching Flash season two until it felt like shortly after Flash season three was already starting. <laughs> it wasn't that long. Yeah, it didn't feel like a barrier. I'm, just, a very I'm gonna say it again. Break. The best comment I've ever seen regarding the Flash and the Flash's breaks, or pers- random or fandom Flash, why do this, CW, CW, to give them hope, only to t- take it away. Oh God, man, you love Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I love I me some Teddy actually, actually, the longer we get out, and I'll say that for Flash talk. Um, yeah. This is um, uh, this is good shit. I like it. Um, also, yeah. I just like seeing I like seeing Arrow, uh, Arrow, Arrow Oliver uh, team up with villains. Yeah, I like that too. And what's surprising is I really like this episode, and not a lot happens, um, which I feel like is a sign of a really Everything good episode. Happens off screen. Yeah, it's a lot of like thought and like conversation. Which... Oh, one more thing. Uh, the car crash that Felicity and oh, Jibble yeah. get into. Yeah, it's was, a little bit ridiculous. They, that was fatal. I'm sorry. Yeah, they would have died. Yeah, they, <laughs> the they should be dead. The car fucking blew up. And, you, yeah, and then the you, only... just, you see Felicity out of the car before Diggle gets and, like, out. They're just like, they have like a few <laughs> bloody like scratch in their face. I'm like, I'm like, they're not covered in soot or burns or anything. <laughs> also, what did they drive into? A, a, a fucking a truck bed full of TNT? What did they hit? <laughs> I don't know. That car blew up a fireball. I don't know. Like this is that's gonna be the uh, the Batman v Superman Batmobile. <laughs> it did uh, remind scene. me of that. Yeah, because like wow, what a way, yeah, it's, what it's, a way to outdo them. It's a little bit of overkill for a TV show. <laughs> um, I think they got such yeah. a good fireball. I think they got they probably were like aiming for a small explosion and it's just like it's just fucking detonated. They're like, ah, cool, whatever, keep it. Yeah, that's that's what we got. We, <laughs> We, well, we don't, don't have another truck. That's actually, uh, what's it called? Way off base, but Friday 13th Part 7, they had to blow up a house at the end. Oh, yeah, and I they used, about that they, in they the, uh, used so much explosives that they created a shockwave and destroyed like a few acres of property. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this, house, this house goes up like a fucking, like, like a nuke hits it. Like, it just, I think they, there's a visible shockwave on camera, uh, but this thing goes up like it's, you wouldn't believe. But uh, here's some random trivia for you. But yeah, that, that car crash was just obnoxious. Yeah, it, yeah, that that it hit. I was like, oh, so they're dead. All right, show's over. Yeah, remember when? And, like this is going back like six years. Remember when at the <laughs> oh season, season two finale of Walking Dead, when the barn just like, blew blew the fuck up? Oh yeah, and actually. It- ha- they had no idea it was going to happen, and they just kept it. <laughs> yeah, it looked like wildfire was in that bar. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, yeah, um, Arrow was, was good. So good. We were talking about other shows. Um, like, and again, the references are just flying fast and furious. The Roshev uh, reference. Uh, and the, what do they immediately do? They gr- they a whole ass try to mm-hmm. get uh, Talia. Yeah. Um, was that Talia or was it just a random girl? Because I wasn't sure. I'm pretty like, sure it was Talia. Okay. If, either way, it, it's uh, it's interesting because I feel like normally you would reveal who that was. Um, if what? it is Talia, then it's like they just ha- didn't have her. Um, How exactly well, did... What pattern did she cut with the, with the uh, swords? 
just like straight line, but like because she got like looks like she got the gas. The gas I don't line. know. It looks, like, it looks like she tries cutting the car in half like midway through. Like no, yeah, because no, it goes by like it goes by to hit her. She goes to uh, like corner. Ron That's Connor? what I mean. It looks like she tried. It looks like she tried to slice the car in half like a cheeseburger. Like, <laughs> yeah, I like, know. Like, like she tried to make a fucking sandwich bread out of the car, uh, which then caused it to go up a conveniently placed ramp and hit a car and then blow up like it was, you know, packed with gunpowder. Yep, not a car, mm. or a truck. Oh wait, wait. Okay, so wait, they referenced Talia like five times this episode. I didn't think we saw her once, did we? No, but we saw no. Nissa at the end. No, and we no, have that little part. moment with, with, between her oh, and I Malcolm. Can't... Malcolm's like, I'll do anything to get my daughter back. Here comes Nissa. I won't do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll slit her throat, and I, I love her. I love her reaction. You mean you will try? Um, <laughs> I, I love her saying. I love her addressing all of her as husband when she first walks in. Um, yeah. And we, also, a lot of we also got stuff. a Legend season one payoff. Kind Did of. We? Yeah. Remember? I guess. What, remember the episode where. Um, it was the episode where they were with uh, Ray, Kendra, and Sarah, and they, Ray and Kendra were trying to do the married life. Oh, God. Oh, oh that time. And Sarah time. got, she thought she was fr- oh, from that time. Oh, yeah, which is and, this is where I found Sarah when they when she goes back to the league. Yeah, and mm. she, she t- tells Ray to... Uh, Send Nissa to Lian Yu. And oh, no, another, okay. another question about Sarah. When did uh, uh, Quentin learn that Sarah was still around? Last last season. Um, yeah. Last season at last season finale. He's remember she, he was the one who told her what happened to Laurel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What last he, legend, he knew uh, legends, The legend season finale. Yeah. Okay. He I goes, still she, remember. I knew. I thought he did, but I couldn't remember where it came Sarah from. Sarah goes to the uh, Arrow Cave, mm-hmm. and, and gives him the news. He apparently they he was the only one they could have they could use for some reason. Uh, Everyone was probably busy. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, but yeah, uh, Katie Cassie didn't suck. Yeah, yeah she was I, really good. Um, and she's normally good at as Black Siren. Uh, I mean, I've had I, a I've, crush on Katie Cassie for about ten years now. I mean, <laughs> most Supernatural fans have. Um, but she was... She, I, I've always said it. She's good when she's playing Laurel as a DA and when she's playing a bad guy. Um, she's just not good at playing Black Canary um, with uh, six months of uh, boxing class as her uh, reason for fighting criminals. I just found uh, out that she was in the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, and it totally looked it made me look at her differently. Yeah. Yep. She she dies like a she dies terribly. Also, if yes. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Like her death is like really she's, bad. Yeah, she's Tina from the original remake, where she's the one who gets uh, dragged up the walls and slashed up. Right, but it looks worse than it did in the original. Yes, it does. Like, well, that's so film, much. Worse. That film was awful to begin with. Yeah. That no, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake is shit. There are there are things about it that are commendable, but it's yeah, it's mostly bullshit. Mostly terrible. Um, uh, one of the commendable things is Jack or Haley. He's doing a great job. Yeah. Everything else is terrible. I mean, well, I like the I like the micro dreams idea. That's a cool. Concept. Oh yeah, that was the yeah, micro naps. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I mean, if but, they did a much better job of scary Terry. <laughs> <laughs> they did. You can run, but you can't hide, bitch. Uh, yeah, bitch. <laughs> just, God damn it. Uh, Rick and Morty, we love you. Also, um, Artemis finally came back. Finally, 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 finally. Even though yeah. she didn't, she barely said anything, and they kind of didn't really make a big deal out of it. She said yeah. she had one line, just one yeah. line. Time to get up, or something, some stupid shit. Yeah, it it was interesting. Oh, okay. Speaking um, of her, where the fuck is Ragman? I I feel like he's gonna come in at the eleventh hour, and that's some what way. I feel like. But it feels like it's been almost too long. I'm like, I'm like I, I thought about saying, I'm like. What the fuck is this dude? <laughs> if well, not, I found out leaving it open for legends. That, that's that's my theory. That everybody was everybody was so quick to say he should be on legends, and I feel like that was a common thing. That maybe that that's the plan to use him on legends. Um, also, he's on it, he's on another TV show called Saving Hope. Oh, okay. Oh well. So he's 
He was There's on that. that. He was on that first before he came to Arrow. Hmm. And do you, do you know whose idea was to, have, to put Ragman into the show? Who? Jeff Johns. Of course it was. I believe it. Every good thing about this he's, show. He's, yeah. he's, dude, he's Grandpappy DC. Like, he's going to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He has some of the best suggestions that you could possibly have. Uh, it explains a lot of problems with Batman v Superman. Hey, um. <laughs> hey, we'll get to that another time. Uh, but, uh, yeah. We'll get um, to that this summer. Okay, we keep on going off track, and this is a really good episode of Arrow. Um, yeah, not a lot happens, but the, it's it's the best setup I've ever seen for a finale, um, possibly ever. They really, like, move the chess pieces in a way that's interesting, and where the pieces are by the end is really exciting. Well, I, um, I just, I'm, I've grown to like Chase a lot, because he is just, he's sick. He like, is... Oliver goes, Oliver is like, he's like, Oliver's like, like my son. He's like, why'd you involve my son? Chase is like, because. Yeah. He's just a total and... dipshit at this point. Yeah, like, he's totally yeah. merciless, and he's just complete shithead. Yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> as, I, he's, um... as I said in the... It's funny, though, because he said that, and it's like, you know, he's like, you know, my boy, and then Chase has his retort, and I'm like, wow, this is tense. And then... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid-ass music. His his theme has grown on me. It's <laughs> still done. So bad. Though. It's really terrible. It's, in and again, we I feel like we make this argument a lot. In a universe full of really great themes. There's gonna be one uh, stinker every once in a while. Yeah, I guess. I guess you gotta have a bad one. It just looks like Blake um, Blake Neely, right? Yeah. Yeah. It just looks like he just walked by his keyboard and just like dragged his like two fingers across like the whole thing and just like was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It does feel a little bit like that. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I like this episode. I like the way that it ends a lot. Um, I did not expect them to actually have Manu Bennett. Uh, I thought that they were going to have a stuntman and he was going to maybe do voiceover. Um, but they brought him back and he looks bamf. So, yeah. I, I, I can't wait for next week. Uh, that beard. Yeah, that was, and that's why I, I think this feels like a, this almost feels like a series finale because like they have all the superstars. Mm-hmm. They're calling in, calling old, calling in old favors. Um, the only thing that'd be missing that... would be Ray and Sarah. I mean, yeah, if they show up at the end in some way, it, it would be like a proper series finale, uh, almost. Uh, I mean, and there's no reason that they wouldn't show up in some way. Maybe they show up in a flashback. I don't know, um, but yeah, it's uh, this episode's good. I don't know. I, I feel like does anybody else have any thoughts? Because it's not a lot to talk about. No, it's not because it's all it's all set up. So yeah, uh, I um, liked I liked the scene where uh, well there there were a couple scenes I liked, like the one where in the beginning Quinn says your approval rating is at seventy percent, and Oliver's like <laughs> he, says, it? he says he says he it's back up at seventy percent. He's like was it ever that high? Yeah, yeah. And also, I do like the birthday, birthday stuff. Is also yeah. Really when cool also. he opens the door and Curtis goes to uh, goes towards him, <laughs> that hurts. Just, that hurt. This hurts. Everything he just hurts. Puts him over his shoulder. It's so good. Well, and if I, I had uh, T spheres, I'd 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 still be on the ground. <laughs> and I love his reaction. You'd what, Curtis? You'd what? <laughs> and his like half smile, like, what would you do, Curtis? Huh? Huh? Um, he's and almost like that line De Niro with the, taxi driver or something. That, um, that line with the cake for like mm-hmm. buying it for a kid and Oliver acting like a kid, and he's like, yeah. "No, that's my that's my concussion talking." <laughs> my yeah. guess was like, "She's like, I bought this for a six year old boy because I couldn't really explain to someone why I'm buying a green arrow cake for an adult." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so good. And they incorporated real fan art, which I which I really appreciated. Um, because uh, I feel like that picture, that fan art of the Green Arrow has been everywhere. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots lots of stuff to like about this episode. Um, uh, we didn't really Fox. see Black Canary, but yeah, I, I understand. Contracts. Black Siren. But not. Well, no, Black Canary. The new one. Yeah, Dinah. Uh, she, Dinah. Was, she, 
Her and like, Renee were absent. Lots of stuff, stuff happened off screen in this show in this episode. Yeah. Lots of implicate like Renee wasn't there, Dinah wasn't there, Talia wasn't there. These people all just reference heavily to make you know they're part of it, but we didn't see them physically. Yeah. We didn't even see them at the end. <laughs> yeah. Because they I guess they couldn't pay them. <laughs> um yeah. I think that's that's about it. For I her. I guess maybe they, can... they just they just stopped showing up and someone's like, Where's Dinah? Who? <laughs> That Maybe. would be great. Uh, what? The like an old eighties show. Maybe the agent the AOS Agents of Shield uh, production stole Arrow's budget <laughs> to get Ghost Rider back. That would be Maybe. the only explanation. They'd st- <laughs> they abscond him with their extra budget. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! We'll be the better show now. For like two episodes. For a few episodes, and that money will run out. No, it's only two episodes. He showed up at the end, of, not actually in an episode, like a, a tiny bit more. Because mm. he, he, Ghost Rider shows up at the end of episode twenty one, and he is fully fully in episode twenty two, which was okay the season finale. The the amount of time I've spent arguing with myself, will I skip through an entire episode just to get to those last five minutes in episode twenty one, or will I just watch episode twenty two? I've spent way too much time on that thought. Um, yeah. Okay, we're talking about Ghost Rider now for some reason. Um, yeah, we can, move on, we can move on to Supergirl. Yes. Uh, I thought this was a really good episode, guys. Um, more setup. This is lots of more setup, too, but it was you know, a little more on the action side. Yeah. There, there was a... Yeah. I liked everything about this. I liked the... There acting, was a team I liked the reveals. Thing. There was a team and Cat, and as Cat, Cat Grant shows up and elevates liked. everything. What was that, Alan? Oh, the you mean Superman? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he looked. I was. He looked less um, beardy, or not beardy. Five o'clock shadowy. Then the last time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I didn't. Re- I didn't. I notice like him much. a lot as Superman for some reason. I think Me it's too. just because yeah. like, he's not something I would think of to cast as Superman. I'm like, wow, he really works. Yeah. I was, I was uh, confused when I first heard the casting, but seeing him on screen as Superman, I think he really works well. Um, he does. He it's it's the chin and it's the way, yeah, it's everything. It's the chin, and, and for lots of other people, it's that booty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the I, mean, name. I remember seeing on Twitter the uh, <laughs> that picture is hysterical. yeah. It's so good. That man looks like he has two hams slid in the back of his pants. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. Then just it, it view was... up the scenes of in, in the season two premiere with him and Kat. Yeah. Kat just being what? like a, just, just being, I don't want to say pervy. <laughs> because yeah, she was right. being kind of pervy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Kat, she elevates everything she touches. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she does. She's great in every she, scene. She came in like in. a tornado. She's like, I'm back. Yes, everyone calm down. Yep. And then she went back when... She... Well, yeah, it wasn't like she goes back to the office and is destroyed and she's like, she's complaining about the smell. Yeah. The smell. Yeah, and it smells it, like that... a gym in there, which is great. <laughs> it uh, gives us some insight into how Jimmy smells on a daily basis, I assume. Well, I mean, uh, when you're running when you're trying to be a reporter, and then you jump into a, an outfit that's basically just lots of constricting metal. I imagine yeah. he stinks all the time. Best part of the episode yeah. though was when he comes in, makes a save, and said, "Hello, James." <laughs> oh, okay, she did say that. I feel like I tuned out for a second. She was like, "She was like, please, I'd know those eyes anywhere, something like that." Yeah, she, no, it. she was like, "I can see the eyes in the slit." I can see your eyes in the slit, <laughs> slit Jimmy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Which is so great. Which also, I want to point out that Guardian and the Daxamite uh, infantry look strikingly similar. It's, it's, it's the exact same. <laughs> it's the exact same outfit. <laughs> it's the same molding. It's the same shit. I, uh, it's, it's a metal outfit. Molding. It's a it's an armored outfit with a slit for the eyes. That's it. And it's the same color and everything. Like when it happened, I'm like, wait a second. Someone the had to. The color is it's slightly more gold on the Daxamite thing. That's it. On the Daxamite, there's, they there's look some more glass. medieval. So funny. It's but Alan, it's like they look like mages, armored but mages. Just, 
when going you from it, one to the other would be so easy with a can of paint and a little bit of plaster. Yeah, also, when you yeah. see the motion, like when they're fighting, you're like, wait a minute, hold on. What's, oh, it's James, uh, it's Guardian, but wait, everybody looks the same. Yeah. Like the shield is the only thing that really tells them apart. Um, uh, speaking yeah. of telling people apart, uh, what was it that happened to Jean in the last episode? So, that so there was like up? a psychic thing, like a a thing that, that I guess the White Martians had whenever they wanted to like oh yeah, it was like a mental, was like to a control trap. yeah to sub- subdue them and then we got then we got Cyber Superman looking like he's fucking wearing a Halloween mask. Yeah, that thing yeah. looks like. He fucking... still looks like 70s Doctor Who to me, which is <laughs> not a good thing. Um, yeah, he looks, he looks really bad. Like a 60, or a 60, a 60, he looks like the second Doctor version of the Cybermen. I mean, that's yeah. If it were like if it were flush with his face, it'd be a different story. But like, he t- there's some points where the light is hitting him, and I'm like, I can see where that is coming off of his face, and there's light. I oh, see yeah. that like that is tin foil. It looks yeah. fake. <laughs> it looks it terrible. Looks... It looks really, really bad. And what um, was up with his voice? Like, what was I don't know. Har- what happened to David Harewood? I think that they... Uh, I feel like because there's so much time in between apparent appearances, they feel like they can fuck with us and just do it differently every single time. Like, I haven't seen his other appearances, but I feel like if I watched all of them in a row, I'd be like, his voice is changing every single episode. It's a different filter that they put on top of David Harewood's voice or something because it's not it's not the same at all. Um, yeah. I don't know. We also got um, Lillian Luther this, returning yeah. this episode. She was really good this episode. Yeah, I... All of the older women uh, in this episode, um, they were all crushing it. Every single one of them. Terry Hatcher was... Uh, she was electric every time she was on the screen. Calista uh, Flockhart looks like she does not age. No, no, she doesn't. No, she looks better now than she did in the 90s. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's that, that Harrison Ford money, you know? Um, <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, yeah, the Star Wars money. It pays for a lot. Um, and, uh, Maybe Linda Carter, she was great. And as the... As the Dor- Doralian? Durrell? Yeah, the Durrellian? Dur- Durrells? I don't know. The Sorry, I'm with a D. It's a very confusing, hard to or say Durrellian? name. It's the three of us. D O R U L A. Clearly, clearly, we're never gonna nail it in this podcast. Um, but yeah, something with a D and a, their faces are weird and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of. There were even some funny lines, <laughs> like when you find out that she was uh, Kat's teacher. No, no, and... RA in college. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> I went into a bathroom and saw E.T., and I, I thought I was just high from pot brownies. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually <laughs> saw E.T. Um, that, was, that was so great. Oh, um, also, the, a great part was when Kat is in the middle of talking and everything, everything she gets a phone call from Madeline Albright, and she's like, yeah. oh, I have to take this. And she mentions um, Bill O'Reilly. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. I, I so, love how she references all these people and yeah. does it in in a, in a great in the like the most superb way possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really funny. Um, Next week, it looks like Terry Hatcher is going to fucking actually like fight Superman. Yeah. Like she's going to have fisticuffs. Never, yeah. I, never in my life where I think I would say Terry Hatcher action sequence in the same sentence. Yep. Yeah, and it looks like that's like the the main billing. I would think it would be Superman and Supergirl, but nope. Uh, and I am interested in seeing how they're going to resolve that with Superman being bad and how Zod incorporates into everything. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited to see how things resolve themselves in the next episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I'm more excited about that than the next show we're going to talk about. Which I guess we should just move right on to. Nobody else has yeah. Supergirl. Cause, yeah, I think we nailed it oh, again. I Supergirl's say, good. Uh, if I was mon during that scene where Rhea says 
Lena Luther will be your bride, and she walks in in that outfit, I'd be like, okay, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I was. That's how, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, assuming I'll never see Kara again, I guess that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, good episode. Um, I don't know, like top three episodes of the season, um, which is fairly easy to say with the show, but still really good. Because I think we can... it had cat. That's uh, yeah. Superman. We we. So here's the thing. I think, I guess we can talk about the season as a whole a little bit. I think we didn't need Guardian this season uh, because he didn't really nope. make sense until this episode. Um, Monel like as a hero as well. Yeah, we didn't need him as her boyfriend. Um, like just the cute friend who says jokes and has superpowers would have oh, been fine. One more thing, uh, them uh, cats. Take down of Trump. When yeah, deciding they're was... going to make the planet great again. Yeah, the the they're always this show being the one that gets political. This um, gets more it right. than any of the other ones. Yeah, I mean, I think Arrow n- nailed it with that gun control episode. Yeah, because um, like when we talk about best episodes of the season, that one's one of my like top five of all the shows. Uh, so. But this show consistently does the po- the political stuff really well, and isn't so in your face about it that it like becomes can, annoying. I feel like they can't afford not to because of the uh, kind of the weird push against like ah, the media, of whatever. I think like yeah, being, their show is centered about people being reporters. Like they kind of have to have some tax to how they handle this political stuff. Yeah, kind of you know uh, uh, take the high route. Yeah. And they, they do a really good job of it. Which is good. I, I, we don't need much thing. Um, all right. Yeah. Um, a fucking flash this fucking season. This this has been an it, absolute like <sighs> beat down. I'm so tired. Yeah. I I don't want to watch the finale. Um, I mean, I do at this point because I've, I just have too many burning questions. Like, how the fuck do you, you pick up after this? When, yeah, have you seen? Have you guys seen the, the? You guys obviously saw the trailer for the. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I I don't remember song. it because I I don't want to. I'm when, having a hard time remembering this because I don't like it so much. Like I I, I it's vehemently lots of, it's it's lots of setup with. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Let me take. Let me just get this out of the way. Every bit with Snart was fantastic. Yeah, that Every stuff was good. Bit. And even it, it includes stuff with Barry. It's all good. Um. This I like what happened terrible. to Pink Shark. Yeah, yeah, this episode wasn't terrible all the way through, but if I have to hear the phrase, how do we stop Savitar one more fucking time, I'm just going to pull <laughs> my hair out. I'm tired of it. I don't care how you stop Savitar at this point. Because, one, the writers seem to just hate the protagonist of the show this whole season, and they just goof and goof and goof and goof and lose and lose and lose, and they get beat, and then this fucking happens. I'm like, wow, this has been like, this has been like reading Injustice. No, no, no. This, yeah. is, this is what... Remember when they... When news broke that the Flash movie, the Flash, the DC EU Flash movie was going to be dark and great and gr- gritty, this has been it's that been season. A... The Flash is just on a down, on a down. Uh, I'm also, I'm sick of, the, I'm sick stream. of this pattern of like, hey, we have an evil, evil speedster. His identity is unknown. Oh my god, we found out who this evil speedster is. We have to do something to stop him. And then along the way, someone dies. Yep. I've been on I've been on that kick for a while now, and uh, I'm glad everybody's with me. Um, uh, it's just... and it's like how many more people can you take away from Barry before you, like even the viewer would go like, well, why the fuck wouldn't he become Savitar at this point? Look what you guys are doing to him. Like, yeah, he sh- he should already be Savitar. He shouldn't need this whole uh, time remnant shit. Or yeah, whatever. I'm gonna take a big old I'm gonna take a big old shit right now. Yeah. So let me get this straight. That was a time remnant that Barry created in the fight with Savitar on this day, correct? No, no, okay. It should okay. So it's supposed to be in the future, um, which I, I'm still confused by. The idea is that it, in the future, okay, no, <clears throat> the way Future Barry explained it, Savitar was still around for a couple more years after this movie, uh, or not? A, I mean, after this episode, and also it took they, a while they, for they Tracy had, to there was know a how to do it. Big continuity error. From that episode, and 
going going forward, <coughs> where it, they were in 2017 and then 20. They you trap Avatar in 2020. Hmm. Yeah, they moved it forward, but they kept saying four years from now. It's it's so confusing. It really is. And somehow the Philosopher's Stone helped him get what out a, of the trap. What a, which... what a fucking lazy thing to do. Let's bring up this thing that was only relevant in the first half of the season and suddenly give it some kind of divine purpose. Fuck you. And it still makes no sense because... So wait, in four years when we know he was supposed to be trapped by that portal, he Drake. did it. Had he would have still had the whole time. The... He would have been like, yeah. aha, look at this. Yeah, it wouldn't change anything. He would have done the same thing then. I don't... <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. The timeline is so fucked, and it. We brought it up last time. I don't think that this was the original plan, at all. No, I do this not. Deal, be- this deals more cobbled together the longer it goes. Yeah, it's. It's so. And annoying. let's just, and, and like killing killing Iris. Yay! That's like where do you go from here? Will you bring her right back? Thanks, that was meaningless. Would you have Barry travel through time? I will throw a fucking puppy if Barry goes back in time and changes to me again. Yeah, like, I understood at the end of last season killing his dad. I understood that, because... It worked out, because, like, then the whole Jake Eric reveal, it was like, a, it was a double punch, and you're like, oh, that's kind of, like, kind of really cool, but really sad. Yeah, yeah. and, like, it elevated Jake Eric as a villain. Um, like, I, I wasn't super into him. But then when he says, you know, while you're busy being the good little boy, I'm going to be over here winning, um, you really got an idea of how unhinged he was. This season is just like, oh, okay, so this is what Jay predicted, um, that Barry would have to become the bad guy and that he would never be able to avoid that. But that's not fun. That's not interesting for a show about a character who is... Not that character. Um, yeah. Can I just say, uh, just point out something that shows how big a Zoom nerd I, or fanboy I am? Yes, please. Yeah, sure. On the the horror, the Harrow. Yeah. My uh, new story about spoiler returns to DC the DCU. I quoted. Uh, um, what was the episode where from last season where with? Where uh, Zoom kidnap Wally? I don't remember. Oh, that was where Barry loses speed. Yeah, I basically just <laughs> did. I typed yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. "Who's the Who's the man in the Iron Mask?" You wouldn't believe me if <laughs> I told you. Believe me if I told you. Yeah, I saw you do um, that. And Alan, for future reference, uh, Harrow is Harrow is supposed to be said the way it is in Boardwalk Empire. That's the, the that's the way you're supposed to say it. Um, so can you demonstrate that? Uh, go and get Haro. Uh, <laughs> I, I have, I'd have to, but just look up scenes of uh, look up Boardwalk Empire, Haro and Jimmy. Um, and however Jimmy says it, that's how you're supposed to say it. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Flash. Um. I really fucking hate what they're doing this season. Um. Yeah, like this isn't Barry. This is this is not my Barry um, at all. Like, because I was watching clips from the first season, and Barry, yeah, he had strife in his <clears throat> life, and he was sad about his dad. The whole point is that he's supposed to be he's always supposed to be above it. Like he's always supposed yeah. to find a way to to kind of beat it. And like yeah. they started down a really bad road, and they're like when they had him go back at the end of season two, and then the whole Flashpoint thing. Flashpoint would have been cool again if it lasted half a season. Yeah. Um, but it also and, doesn't help. It doesn't help this this downward spiral of like Barry being a destructive, mopey, sad man. Yeah, the, the whole and, show would have been better if it was like Arlen says, like Arlen preaches, like much less in terms of episodes. Yeah. Oh God, yes. Yeah, and I've said that for a long time. Or, and that's why I mentioned the breaks earlier because when you stretch twenty three episodes out yeah. over. You know, a weekly basis, and then you throw in a mid-season break, and then you throw in another break, and then somewhere after that, there was another break. And like by the time they get back, you're like, "This is," and this is also being uh, assisted by the Savitar problem. We come back, and it's like another day, another not Savitar reveal. Yeah, like I would rather it be 
ten episodes straight, no break, and then break for however long that has to be in order to have it all done production-wise. Because the reason they have those breaks is production. They yeah. have a gap in production that makes it so that they will not have the next episode done for another week. Okay, that's fine. We can accept that. They have to take X amount of time in order to finish the show. And think about how long Legends has been done for now. Yeah, it's been done for so long that it's been on Netflix now Yeah, for two weeks. No, three weeks. Um, that's how long it's been gone. That said, CW is this ex- expedited contract thing, which is really, really cool, to be honest. Um, yeah, like, I'm, this whole Netflix I'm thinking thing? of revisiting Legends. First, Real. Marvel or ABC and Marvel, Marvel, whatever Marvel TV, they had this type of thing with Agents of Shield, going back to season two, I want to say. Mm. And DC or CW beat them to that in that department. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but like yeah, R- this... Riverdale, which ended. Last week is already up. Is it already up? Yeah, it's yeah. already up. It went up uh, <clears throat> yesterday. Like, I, like on Tuesday, I was trying to watch it, and I was having problems with my cable. And I was seriously considering just waiting. Like, <laughs> just being like, I'm going to wait till it's on Netflix. Watch it that way. Um, it'll be a better experience because um, fucking cable sucks. But All right, <laughs> let's get to, the, the, let's get to the, the few things, like the HR theory, which has already been, I think, debunked. It's been debunked, but I'm... I'm the pieces are still there, and I still want to know how they're going to use those pieces. Like HR, like, well, they're from what? Well, not just that. In the last four episodes, how many times have they shown that claw, like held on that claw for thirty straight seconds without cutting away? Like they just they they're in that room with that claw, and they just zoom over and pan to it, and they hold on it. Like there's some reason that they're doing that. Like it is in some way going to affect the finale, and I can't help but think that is somehow related to how they save Iris. Um, either well, they wait, uh, Connor, here's my here's my Connor, ultimate did guess. Did you see Pages? Yeah. Um, his theory? Uh no, I watched some emergency awesome stuff. I didn't see Pages thing yet. His was that in episode in three hundred nine. Iris says "I love you" to Barry before she gets stabbed, mm, yeah, or impaled. And and he said that in three twenty two, she doesn't say it. Mm. And also that the fact that Joe was on was on the roof with the gun in the 322 and in 309 it was HR on the roof with the gun. Yeah, but they, they released the promo for next week and they show HR reacting to what just happened. Like, he has a gun as well and he is all shocked. So, that's out the window. Hmm. But there's also, Alan showed me clips, or not clips, pictures of Savitar Barry and regular Barry just hanging out somewhere. Yeah, no, that's in the, in the Cortex. It, and I'm thinking like this, is what, this is what's going to happen. I saw this woman point this out. I think Emergency Austin pointed this out. That Snart, what Snart was saying to Barry is how this is going to all end. Uh, he said in the Speed Force thing, too. He says, you keep trying to beat Savitar at his own game. You can't out-bad him. You, you can't do what he's doing and hope to succeed. You have to beat you. And I think this is going to literally end with the fucking power of love. Or positivity or something. Maybe. I, I don't gonna, know. And somehow going to convince Savitar Barry that, like, what he's doing is wrong, and I think he will be the one who goes back in time and saves Iris, which... Would... Connor, because you said power positivity, the New Day theme popped into my head. <laughs> of course it did. Um, so I have a couple theories. So I've seen a couple of other set pictures also, and there's one with a woman who, I mean, Looks as far like as Barry's I can mother. tell... Yeah, it's 100% Barry's mother. Um, we've only seen her in the past, outside of flashbacks to the night. Or um, Flashpoint. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that's Speed Force related. Um, but as I was going to say, we've only seen her in connection to the Speed Force. Um, recently, at least. Uh, she was uh, one of the forms the Speed Force 
took on when it was trying to communicate with Barry. With um, the runaway dinosaur. Right. So what this makes me think is that I think Barry's going to try to travel back in time again. Oh, my God. God. Damn it. Connor, oh. pick that dog. But, but, I, but I think this time it's not going to work. I think the Speed Force is going to stop him, and they're going to punish him. Uh, and they're like, going to turn him into fucking Zavatar. Oh, God, that would be great. Um, that would be better <laughs> than what they've done so far. Um, no, I've heard a lot gonna... of people say that this season is going to end one way or the other with Barry in the Speed Force to somehow pay for what he's been doing. Yeah. Yeah, or, basically taking Jay's place. Or another singularity opens up. And he has, and somehow it threatens Savitar, um, and they have to work together. That is something that I think is a total possibility. And somehow a Speed Force spirit of his mother comes out, and it is actually somehow his mother. Um, who knows? I don't know how that works, but you know, in some way it is her soul trying to help him. Um, there was another uh, part, uh, uh, preview for, for Finish Line. Yeah. It was Savitar, what looked like a, a breach or some Speed Force thing. Savitar was running in running yeah, around in he circles. Yeah, was, he was running, he was, he was opening up the Speed Force. He was doing that thing where they run and create enough speed to, you know, pop a hole in, the, in reality. And Killer Frost is watching him, who, by the way, she's already on her road back to being Caitlyn, so, which I think happens yeah. by next episode. Yeah, because yeah. is I've like, in, with the with, the, J- Just League of America. She's a, yeah, she's good right now. And I have a feeling mm. right now the public, the media side of DC, and the public and the publishing, they're starting to uh, get more connected, or more intertwined. Yeah. Like, before Rebirth happened, I, Henry Allen I, with... I think she was always... Uh, no, she, yeah, she, wasn't, she was a villain. Yeah, but I think she was always meant to become a good guy. I think even from the beginning, when they first announced her as a character on the show, I think the plan was always to turn her evil and then turn her good. Um, I think that they planned on doing it earlier than this. I really do. I, I feel like things just happened that prevented that. Um, going back to that Savitar opening a Speed Force portal or breach, she looks concerned. Yeah. Yeah, she looks I, upset I, for some reason. I think Savitar is going to do something that he can't walk back from. Uh, maybe he opens some sort of singularity that he can't close. Um, who knows? Also, I have a question. Where the fuck did he get Barry's suit? Oh, that was I think a... he just has his old one. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's bare. It's you know, it's still Barry, so I'm sure he had an old suit lying around somewhere. Yeah, he's like, or maybe he, he, he keeps an old one. No, that's a, that if you look funnier. at that suit again, Alan. If you look at that suit again, it's battle damaged. Um, like it looks like it's been like lit on fire. Like especially yeah. in the emblem, uh, the white has been rusted away. So it's very much like a suit that hasn't been used in a while. Um, maybe it is inside of his new suit. I will say that it in there. that moment was just through editing and uh, that was brilliant. Like shock value. That was really cool. Because um, like they show it, what looks like Barry running back from Argus and runs inside. He goes, "Hi, everybody. Cool. Where's Iris?" And then, like, I thought, I thought what was happening was like because he said earlier in the episode, he's like, "I can't know where she is because if I know, Savitar knows." So I thought that like. He just instinctively said it, and HR just instinctively answered, and then all of a sudden, boom, Savitar would know, and then they fooled me. And he just turns his head clockwise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was good. Um, And and then the ending happened. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Also, like, what... I'm sorry. What was the sniper position for? They've already tried opening fire on Savitar. What were they hoping to achieve? I don't... I don't know. Like, here's the thing. I seriously thought... That the reason that they were again they keep on doing the spike. I thought that they were going to shoot the spike at him. <laughs> I seriously thought that that's what was going to happen. They were going to have the the spike on a gun or something, and it was going to be like Incredibles, where they shoot the spike and it's the only thing that can penetrate his armor, and they kill future Barry. 
Um, something I, there was only one thing about this episode I liked. That seems to be, uh, and that was yeah. seeing Harry again. Yeah, I, uh, that was a very pleasant surprise. I will say. Yeah, he was good. Because I'm like, it, I, I also miss I miss his character because like he is the one of all that gr- crew who's like you know Savitar's in there. And he's like nobody move. He's like I'm taking Iris. He's like motherfucker. I have a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has no it's problems so like putting himself directly in danger. Yeah. Um. And he's afraid of nothing. I love it. Yeah. I really like the moment between Cisco and Barry, where he's going off to like challenge uh, Killer Frost because he knows he ha- he has to. Um, that, that was a really good moment, and an episode that's kind of terrible. Um. There's a lot of good stuff in here, I guess. But it's, and we, it's, just, it's, it's it's the ending. The third act of the episode ruins everything. Yeah, it's it's really the and art much as season. much as it's been the whole like the last few episodes, these big reveals and big moments. It's it's unlikable stuff at the end of okay episodes. Yeah, it's basically the opposite of what uh, Walking Dead was during in the early seasons when they'd be. Or like, lot, it was lots of nothing and then like big reveals at the end. Yeah, like at the end of look. Um, Vatos. When at the end, near at the end of the episode, the Walkers attack. I don't. I don't know. I don't know when that was. But that was um, season one. Yeah. Oh, that was forever ago. Uh, yeah. No, I. Just, yeah. I don't know. It's again like. At, at first, I was like, the only way the series can end with any kind of oomph is to kill Iris, and then it happened. I'm like, well, this is just this sucks. Yeah. Like because I hadn't thought about the way we talked about it last week, where it's like this is so glum. There was it, some, yeah. there was some romance between HR and uh, Tracy. God, I love those two nerds. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I I've kind of fallen in love with HR at this point. Um, like I I really did not like him at first, and he's really grown on me. Um, which and that's the thing. His scene where he's like he he's really like nailing it. That's what made me think that they're going to kill him. Like, it is a very much a, a I'm going to die next episode speech. Um, and it, it feels like that. It feels like a goodbye speech. I think, I think the issue that presents is, like, I know they have Tom Cavanaugh on for, you know, multiple seasons. I'm sure he's a series regular yeah. at this point. Like, I think it, it, it creates the problem of, like, shifting in and out different versions of Harrison Wells. Yeah. Constantly. I think they're probably intending on keeping him around and maybe use Harry sparingly. Yeah. I do think Harry's whole... I think Harry really is dying, um, which makes me think Harry will be back next season, uh, yeah. whether or not HR is still there or not. Um, I get the feeling he's going to be very involved as that character. I mean, that's the thing. He could play three different versions of Harry in a single episode easily because he's just... He's so good. Um, also, just yeah. listeners, when we were talking about... the. the this, the Flash, or ne- next season of The Flash in the in the mod chat, Orlin was like, yeah. Alan, Alan's favorite version of Wells is going to come out. I immediately posted a picture of H- Hell's Wells. <laughs> yep. I love that character. So I yep. think we can, we can move on from Flash now. Uh, there is some kind of dynamite news that happened today that almost made me fall the fuck over. Yeah. It, was, it, seems um... like, no, it seems like I woke up in a different reality. This is it, ridiculous. It feels like fan speculation. News, this this right? feels like a this feels like a fake headline, like through and through. Tom Hardy right, is gonna I, fucking play Venom. Are you are yeah you shitting me? <laughs> like it's not gonna have a shitty script. Fan casting. I mean, <sighs> like that, that's the problem. It's like they went. I'm mad because I was you know I, as evidence of the show. I am 150 percent against this movie existing, totally through and through. Oh yeah. And then they did something like this. I'm like, you. I have to see this movie now. Yeah, even if it's even if it's bad, oh. uh, I, 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 it'll be great. Um, yeah, I, I can't. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah like, I'm wondering what kind of funny voice he's gonna have on with the venom suit. I think he's gonna do his normal voice when he doesn't have the suit on, but when he has the suit on, he's gonna go full on like crazy Tom Hardy voice because that's the only thing that makes sense. We're New York um, Rise and Ashes, then you have my permission to die. Um, and I said it in the chat. They're never going to do the white eyes. They're just going to do makeup around his eyes. Yep. Because uh, Tom Hardy, 
among his many talents, uh, he's the best in the world at acting with only his eyes and without the lower half of his face, as we've he's seen also, in 15 films. He is also someone who they can literally just put, like, he could be stark ass naked and they could just put like a prosthetic on him or something like to cover some parts and put a mask on him and he'd be set yeah. because if you've ever seen Bronson like the entire third act of the film Tom Hardy is basically cu- wearing nothing but black paint yeah that is I, it <laughs> He's and I mean I'm, yeah, and if I'm mad because seen, uh... Uh, I'm mad because I keep whenever I want a mental image of Tom Hardy I get a mental image of J- Jai Courtney <laughs> that's that's a that, oh wow what's that's a horrible from, condition. What's his face from Prometheus too is like a dead ringer for Tom Hardy. Yeah, um, yep, yeah. uh, something green or whatever. Star yeah, of uh, the invitation, good shit too. Something. Yeah, he's he's been in a lot of good stuff. Um, he was on the OC, Logan Marshall Green. That's right. Here we go. He was also uh, in this, um, Quarry, which this, is a cinema show. This news is just also, flabbergasted. Logan Marshall Green in uh, Prometheus, or he he basically already looks like Commander Shepard. Yeah, more yeah. Or less. I mean, I, I feel like if they ever actually do anything live action, that's who he'll that's who he'll be. They'll, they'll just um, get yeah, but this is this is like you couldn't announce anything. This is that would make me on board with the Venom movie. More than this. I, I like, read the headline. I was like, I was like, I was like, Tom Hardy is Venom, and they got the Zombieland director. But Tom Hardy's. <laughs> I, okay, so I really like Zombieland, and it, I it love seems Zombieland. to be. A, it yeah, it seems to be like a generational divide where there's a group of people that don't like it as much. Uh, there's a group of people who really, really love it, and then there's a group of people who like it. Uh, I seem to be in that generation that really, really loves it, um, oh, even though it's, it's only a couple. I think years. it's fantastic. Um, it's just weird because that guy hasn't done much of anything since. Yeah, afterwards, I mean, each he movie blunk- has its own. He, uh, he blumcomped, is what I like to call it. Yeah, he, he kind of blunk- did blunk- blumcomp. Although I haven't seen 30 Minutes or Less. It might just be like a really dumb comedy. It's, which... it's bad. And Gangster Squad is a movie where I remember watching it and thinking... There was a good mo- version of this movie at some point. Um, he directed Gangster Squad? Yeah, that's his. Um, Is that the movie and... with Keanu? No, no Gangster so that, Squad's got Josh no, that's, Brolin, uh, like Ryan Gosling, and like uh, yeah. uh, Emma Stone. It's Emma like Stone. it's it's colorized Sin City, but having context in real American history. Yeah, yeah but tonally, it's closer to um, <sighs> God damn it, Dick Tracy. Yes, like it. It has and the Sean, same tone. Sean as Penn is the main. Sean Penn is the like the, the cast is ridiculous, and you watch it, you're like, this is the silliest shit I've ever seen. Yeah, it's fucking goofy as fuck. Um, and it's, I mean, it's literally the Untouchables. It's also, it's also called Gangster uh, Squad, so take that for what it's worth. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the Untouchables, but worse. Um, that's what I would call. It. <laughs> like it, it really is. Like I watched the Untouchables, and I was like, the, oh, this is like a better Gangster Squad. It's the semi Touchables. Um, yeah, but it's, I can see where there was a good version of that movie, uh, 100%, and it was kind of sad when I watched it, but I don't know, Ruben Fleischer, I get the feeling he never got a chance to make a movie with as little studio interference as he did on Zombieland. Now, now now my my curiosity is like, is, couldn't be more peaked, even though I don't want it to be, because I'm like, I'm like, okay, you have arguably one of, like, the best leading guys in Hollywood right now. Like, what the f- like, what the fuck yeah. are you gonna do around him? Like, how does this how is this movie even gonna function without having Spider Man? I, I don't know, and that's the thing. Like, I keep on thinking of Connor. He's been he a leading in... man for over well over a decade. Well, I know oh, he's been around for a long time. Boy, not really Star Trek, but he is, he is not realistically up until, until not that long ago. Like, I saw him in yeah. Rock and Roll. I fucking love Rock and Roll, but he was a bit part in that movie. Yeah, realistically, his real like moment was the Dark Knight. Yeah. There was like a mini moment in Inception. Like people remember him from Inception, that's for sure. But when people talk about Tom Hardy, it's uh, I'm Gotham's Reckoning. That is yeah. their intonation. That is what they think of, um, and that's what like he'll be buried, uh, and <laughs> a Bane mask will be left at his grave. Um, his grave will by... be a, gra- a Bane mask. 
Yeah, because it's just like he he's going to be iconic and like and his headstone will just say for you. Yeah, <laughs> and like he he's so iconic in that role that they have changed the character of Bane. Yeah, <laughs> going forward to be more like his Bane. Um, wherever they can, they make his voice an English voice. Uh, they make his costume more like the movie costume. Yeah, like and the they Lego even ba- the Lego Batman version of Bane is entirely based on Dark Knight Rises, and it's fucking oh, yeah. what's his face voicing it. It's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's Doug Benson, which is yeah, it's... <laughs> which is the which is the greatest joke if you're a Doug Loves Movies listener at all. Um, also in uh, the Batman comics, I am got I am Suicide. Yeah. I mean, when when they relaunched, or wasn't a relaunch, when they did Forever Evil, and they did those villains books, remember, Alan, where, like, the villains took over Batman for an issue or whatever? It was, uh, uh, I think, three issues? They had, they yeah. had a point one, point two, like, point three. Yeah, it might have been four. I'm not sure. But there was one where it was just Bane who took over for an issue, and that was the relaunch of his design. And if you look at that issue now, he's wearing Bane's costume from the movie verbatim. He's wearing yeah, the suspenders. It, like, it bled into uh, it bled into Arkham Origins too, because his build in that game is not so cartoony, and he has like a big he has a jacket with a fur lining on the top and everything. Yeah, the only thing that's authentic Bane in Origins is his accent. Everything yeah. else. The irony, I though. The... Funny, funny that you mention him being redesigned in the new Fifty Two. He in Batman and Robin Eternal. He actually got they went, they went back to his old design. Yeah, probably yeah. because they realized nobody was coming back to DC because of Bane. Um, but it was a, it was a nice thought. Uh, but and now, I understand now it, um, Tom, Tom King basically redid they redid Bane's origin. Yeah. Wait, did they do it to be more like the movie? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> So well, there, there you go. Um, yeah, again, like instrumental, iconic in that role forever. Um, I don't think he did. I don't think he's. I don't think he changed Max. Uh, I feel like he just he he more Max, did a James Bond Ma- thing. Yeah, and Max. It up. Max is kind of an easy role to pick up, I would suppose, because just it's lots yeah. of physical acting, not really a lot of like. It's not a lot of emotional range. You're there to kind of just have things bounce off of you. I watched yeah. the. Um... I watched the one of the bonus features on iTunes for 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 Mad Max Fury Road, and he had a meeting with, or he had a he had lunch with Mel Gibson, and he was like, he, Mel agre- s- approved because he finally met someone crazier than himself. <laughs> That's hard to do. That's a glowing endorsement. Um, um, no, I just, this this is just like, fuck it, this is yeah. Like a hunter said, like a hunter's not here today. A uh, hunter said he like. His phone was off, and he turned it back on, and just started hearing that Tom Hardy was Venom, and he thought he was in a different universe. Yeah, it, it feels like it, it feels like an alternate universe. This feels like, like one of those things they put on Facebook, where it's like blah 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 blah, like headline. You click and it takes you to some fucking spammy piece of shit computer killer website. Oh yeah, totally. It, it feels like something like that, like something you'd see on a knockoff of Cracked, um, uh, which I won't name, but yeah, it's it's that kind of. Crap! In a headline, but believe, it, as far okay, as we can tell, believe, it's real. I can't believe this movie is coming together faster than the fucking Flash movie. It, Who has now, the Flash has now lost two directors and a star. It's so fucked. So, so let's talk about the Flash drama because that's a perfect segue. Um, <laughs> Billy Crudup. Flash. Billy Crudup so, left the Flash. <laughs> Billy Crudup left the Flash, and now he is back on the Flash. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> he left, and then he came back. No. There were there were people reporting that he had left the movie, and then tw- not even twenty four hours later, later in the day, <laughs> the news came out. No, he didn't leave the Flash. That was just a rumor. That wasn't real. Which was just like, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, but I, he, see, no, I saw still in the his, movie. I saw a hysterical article where it says article where it says uh, Billy Crudup Googled the Flash movie and then decided to drop out. It was so good. <laughs> it's the that's my favorite headline ever. Um, <laughs> First movie well, I'm like, I'm like, sometimes like, nail it. Yeah, and like, like when it first launched, when it first came out, I was like, he left. He's in Justice League. Yeah, how are they gonna fix this? <laughs> oh man, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to recast him and they reshoot so his many, entire part. They put so many cards before the fucking horses here. 
Yeah. Um, but no, he was he was confirmed, reconfirmed. But earlier this week, we got uh, a huge information dump. Um, so Sam Raimi was rumored to be doing the Flash. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but Kingsman director, Matthew which Vaughn. wasn't as much of a surprise because we already had the Superman rumors. I totally believe that when he went in to meet with them, he then, talked about every character. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was offered Batman in that same and meeting. Robert Zemeckis has been coming up a lot lately. Yeah, he came up about a week or so ago, and then that was written off as a rumor. Which to me that, seems like back. the most perfect fit, and I'm I'm kind of bummed that's not happening because it's coming not, back to the future. That's, well, that's I, not confirmed. I'm, I'm not. Nothing, dude. I'm so confused. No, nothing is concrete with this movie. I don't. Even, I don't even know if they have a script. Here's the thing. I want to be surprised. This is, and this is why you. Sh- this is why you shouldn't put a fucking release date before your movie even enters production. I, I, yeah. My favorite thing why... about this is that Aquaman is more on track than this movie. Yeah. Well, well, Aqu- they got a Aquaman is on Aquaman track. Movie on track. Yeah. And Amber well, Heard. Damn. That's because James Wan gets what he wants. Uh, because yeah. the Conjuring is real, and he knows how to summon those spirits. Um, <laughs> and, and Hollywood is very superstitious. Bathsheba, and then she comes and kills all the executives. So James Wan doesn't go to any production without that nun behind him. <laughs> yeah, he has the painting. <laughs> does she ever? Does she ever leave? No. <laughs> I imagine she's always, always with a straight face. He goes to like leave, and the nun turns around with like the painting on its face, and just like runs back to them full speed, and like sh- makes the fucking exec shit their pants. <laughs> you can have whatever you want. You can have everyone. Just take her with you. And then, like, and then the nun takes it, pulls the painting down, pulls the mask off. It's just Lee Winnell. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Oh God, so good, so good. And he has a uh, he has the boy from Iron Man three who's also an Insidious with him and yeah he's just <laughs> what are you doing here I'm just here to laugh that was funny shit goodbye yep. <sighs> yeah so good but uh, Aquaman's on it's on this schedule movie is, because this movie is quickly going the way of the Gambit yeah yeah and uh, by the way guys Aquaman is going the way of that was supposed to come out last year <laughs> Gambit was oh, supposed yeah. to come out last year. Supposed to come out we are, in September we are almost of last year. Halfway through 2017, and that Gambit movie could be any more fucking dead. Yeah, yeah. Did is Chang Thank God still attached that, or did he drop out? He probably is. Um, I think Fox is like super dead set in this movie for some reason. I just like I said, I can't believe that Sony got a Venom movie off the ground faster well, than the Gambit yeah. movie. They announced three other movies since they canceled the Gambit movie for the time being, so I don't think Gambit will ever happen. Yeah, because um, the rumor was Channing Tatum, he left that to be in the Flash movie, of all things, as Len Snart. Oh, oh, that's like, that's, you couldn't find more perfect casting for a that's movie. Dan, that's wonderful. Than that. Can you, yeah. please get, can you please get Jonah Hill to play Heat Wave? <laughs> oh, would, you really do have to go like the exact opposite. <laughs> like, you have to do completely different. Um, that's why Ezra is kind of inspired casting. Um, but by the time his movie comes out, I'll be completely in love with him in the role because that's how long it's taking to get this shit done. Yeah, we'll have we'll um, be able to digest him fully in Justice League before we ever get a chance to see this movie. Yeah. Well, I've seen Justice League 30 times over. Whoa, hey, don't get, don't get too zealous about that. Just expectations I mean, are very tempered, all right? <laughs> yeah, Diane Lane did I'm, say I'm, it wasn't going to be as good as Avengers. <laughs> Fucking PR disaster that was. <laughs> that, that was pretty great. Yeah. Well, no and no. Oh, God, no. No, no. No, God, no. No, not a chance. <laughs> so good. Extra comments. Um, like, he's, there, he's directing this thing? <laughs> there was other news, but I, I don't remember what it was. Um, uh, I don't remember either, but yeah. we talked for a while. But no confirmation on Flash. Uh, they did announce people rewriting it, um, Again. which made sense, I guess. I don't know if it's exactly our thing, but... Uh, David Ayer, Ayer is directing a Scarface movie, um, which that's that's perfect. Um, I, I mean, I kind of want to. In my heart, he comes back and directs Suicide Squad two the way that he wanted to direct it, um, and M- M- Warner Brothers pulls their heads out of their asses. But that feels like a dream that's so far away by this point that uh, yeah, I'm giving up on it. We'll see with Wonder Woman. Uh, so. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. Early word, early, early word is good, but like that's also like everyone's like, oh yeah, the reactions for a great. I'm like, the reactions for Batman and Superman were fucking fantastic when that movie first showed. It's because of excitement. Yeah. Well, that wasn't by critics. That was fans. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the critics are even then were like, I don't, I don't think so. And the fans were like, insanely enthusiastic. It was like. Oh, this is the greatest film that has ever been made. Um, and I remember being like, okay, I, I don't always trust the fans on this stuff. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you guys I, say. I never trust... Oh, well, I guess I do have some news that Mark Wahlberg was considered for Bloodshot, which... Eh, okay. Mm, that's, that's a thing So uh, that there happened. There is something I, I kind of want to talk about because... Oof. What uh, is it? Because I'm starting to burn up in here. <laughs> Because Logan is coming out on is releasing physically in like three days. Uh huh. Um, Russell Crowe announced talked about why he re, he didn't take the role as Wolverine. I'm <laughs> curious, but I also don't care for Russell Crowe. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a take I've never heard. Um. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that. Like, um, I, well, if you he's go fine. back, he's, he's serviceable. In, like, yeah, like he, back, this is right after not, uh, Glad. This is this, this is right after Gladiator. Right, like at that point, at that at that point, he was saying yes and no to things so quickly that whatever he says now, I don't believe him. <laughs> um, yeah, because it's like, oh, you want to do X Men? No. Like the last superhero movie that he probably saw was Batman and Robin. Um, I he, at best. Also, he was kind of a drunk and a asshole. The motherfucker at the time. was in Man of Steel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, yeah. what did he say? What, what was his? His reason is he didn't want to be typecast as a fan of wolves. Okay, that's our show for tonight. <laughs> and no, no, but the thing is. <laughs> Do you know? It, it was him. That, That's it. He he was like, it was him. That he was the one who I'm suggested so Hugh Jackman to, to Brian Singer to. Uh, I, I, I heard that part. Um, hmm. There's nothing else to say. It's okay, dumb, I'm, That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. We're done. <laughs> We're so broken right now. He that's thought so it dumb. was. I I don't want to be typecast as a fan of wolves. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think we're good. Let's do plugs. Um, yeah, hey, go follow me on Twitter. Uh, where I'm going to stay quiet while I attempt to process what Alan just told me um, about how Russell Crowe is fucking thick as a fucking coconut. Uh, yeah, you can find me uh, on Twitter uh, at a Haro. Get my get my get my thoughts on things. Um, gonna have a Alien Covenant review out pretty soon. Um, no spoilers, but uh, there are other films in the franchise that I liked more. Um, so stay tuned for that on lostharrow.wordpress.com. Uh, you can find my writing there. You can find Hunter's writing there, and you can find Alan's stuff there. Alan, you got anything coming up soon? Yes, I'm going to be doing working on a review for part four of the Button crossover between Batman and Flash. Flash and this is Flash 22 by Josh Williamson, or by Howard Porter, and sweet. I I put down in in a news story that I would be doing it, so I have to. There's nothing I I, I can't. Yeah, I have to do. You it made a point. promise. I made a promise. Yeah, yeah. You made a promise to the universe. Um, and uh, you can assuming. That you're listening to this podcast as a one-off for some reason, and that you're not a, already a constant listener. Uh, you can find this podcast at uh, the Phantom Zone Podcast dot WordPress dot com. Uh, there you can find all the different links and ways to listen to this show, to share it with other people, YouTube, iTunes, everything that you can imagine, every, every way to listen to this show currently. And uh, please share, like. Reviews, subscribe, please. review, please, something, do it. Any, yeah, do it. Tell your friends, tell your family. Awesome. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. 
Do it now. Do it. Also do the same Let thing the for hate video game hour. Through you. Yes, do it for video game hour. Because uh, there you have uh, you have three fifths of this podcast when it's at full capacity. Full capacity. Um, <laughs> Which seems to be less and less nowadays. But uh yeah, anyway, okay, it's been a Have a good night, everybody. Bye.